Hi, and welcome to the fifth video in the Hibernate video tutorial series by Locum Chanakya. In the previous tutorials, we talked about the project structure of a Hibernate application, and we also talked about creating and configuring databases, database tables, and database users in MySQL using PHP MyAdmin. In this tutorial, we'll be going into the actual coding part of the Hibernate application. In the first step, we'll be adding the persistence class that we need for our hibernate application. Check on the left side where we have our project which we already created using the project structure that a hibernate class needs or a hibernate application needs. In the source folder we have the com.hibernate.demo package which has all our classes. In this, the CRUD operations class and the main class we will do later. For now, let's concentrate on the persistence class which consists of all our variables or instance variables which are mapped from this particular object to the columns of records in the MySQL database. Let's open up the persistence class and you can see that there's nothing there as of now. The first step will be to add annotations for the class so that we can tell that this particular class is being mapped to a particular table in the MySQL database. To do that, we add the at entity, class, entity, um, at entity annotation. You can see that there's a small error. When you click on that, it says import entity java x dot persistence or import entity or dot hibernate dot annotations. The correct one will be to import entity java x dot persistence. The next step, next step will be to tell that this particular object or this particular class is being mapped to the demo table that we created in the MySQL database in the previous tutorial. So for that, we use the at table um, annotation and in the brackets we give the attribute value name equal to and the ta table name demo table you can see we also have to import this here also the same thing import the java x dot persistence one once that is done the next next step will be to add the instance variables which are mapped to the columns of the database tables over here we have three database columns that we used in the previous tutorial. Those are id, which is an integer, and two strings, namely name and email. For that, let's add these variables. int id for the id, which is the primary key of the class, and we'll also add two strings, string name. Make sure that you put them in two different rows, because we'll be changing the, a lot of properties later. So the next class will be uh, add annotations for these, to know which variable is mapped to which column of the demo table. For that, for the first one, we'll use the at the rate of id as it's the primary key. We also remember that we give an auto increment for the id class and that we'll not be inserting the values into the id. For that, to mention it to hibernate, we have to add the at generated value from Java X persistence. Once that is done, we're pretty much done with the int id. The next step would be to add the column name using the at the rate of column. For this, we give an attribute which is name, add equal to, and give the ID column name as ID. The next step will be to add annotations for the strings, that is, for name and email. For strings, you don't have to add either the ID or the generated value annotations as they're not primary keys, or they don't use auto increment either. So for this, we simply add the column annotation along with the name, which is name again. And similarly, let's add the at the rate of column for the email column as well. Now that we created our variables along with the IDs, the next step will be to make all these variables private as we want to provide proper encapsulation and abstraction for all the variables. We do not want these variables to be accessed directly by anyone. So in order to access these variables, we have to write setters and getters. The proper way would be to sit and write all the setter getters by yourself, but Eclipse and other IDs provide you easier methods. For that, right click on one of the variables, and you can see in the source menu, you go over to sub menu and you can see generate getters and setters over here. When you click on that, it asks you for which variables you want to set the getters and setters. So for that, we simply click select all and click on OK. 
and you can see that we've generated all the getters and setters for all three other variables. This is a very small class that we're showing with only three instance variables, namely ID, name, and email ID, but we can increase these to any number of variables that you want. This is how we create the persistence class in Java, and this class will be later mapped in the later tutorials using the XML files to our database table. Thank you for listening to our tutorials and hope you subscribe to our videos and like them as well. Hope to see you later. Thank you.